Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser and here we are in Los Feliz up in the hills. We're standing in front of this amazing old historic house which was built back in 1923. Now the architecture alone tells you that this is a special place. But we're going to spend the whole afternoon inside this house because inside this house is something that you have to see to believe. And even when you see it, you might not believe it. Let's go inside. Who dares disturb the sleep of the Acker Monster? Mr. Ackerman, it's Huell Hauser. Can I come in? I bid you welcome. Enter at your own risk. Oh, boy. <laughs> come on in, Louie. Okay, we are inside, and let me formally introduce everyone. Come on over here, Mr. Ackerman. This is Mr. Forrest Ackerman, who is... Well, there's no rival to you anywhere in the world. You are acknowledged to be Mr. Science Fiction. In well, fact, not, not, uh, not only this world, but several others that I have visited. <laughs> and you coined the expression sci-fi. Yes, That's I, your word. Yeah, you'll look in vain for it before 1954, but I was riding around the automobile, had the radio on, heard some reference to hi-fi, and since science fiction had been on the tip of my tongue ever since 1929, I looked in the rear view mirror, stuck out my tongue, and there tattooed on the end of my tongue was sci-fi. Sci-fi. You invented Yes, I word. did. Oh, by the way, you might like to take a look at Bela Lugosi's Dracula ring. Now, is that really the actual that is ring really that Bela Lugosi wore in the Dracula movie? Absolutely. They're a carnelian with a silver overlay. Now, how did you get this ring? Oh, don't be afraid. <laughs> I never drink at Hollywood and wine. Oh, boy. We're in for a lot of this this afternoon, aren't we? <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> All right, you're home. In case you haven't caught on yet, your home from ceiling to floor is sci-fi. That's correct. Including right over here in the corner. Now, what's this? Uh, that's from the uh, TV series, uh, Battlestar Galactica. And it turned up in uh, another film, which I had uh, one of my many cameos. I've done uh, 94 cameos to date. Really? So yes. you've been in sci-fi movies as well? Well, I was the future president of the United States in Amazon Women on the Moon. <laughs> Next film I graduated became president of the world. Uh-huh. Then after two terms I was out of a job and all I could get was to be a judge in Nudist Colony of the Dead. It was, uh, now I missed that one, Nudist Colony of the Dead. Oh, you lucky devil, you lucky devil. <laughs> Let's walk in here. Yes. Louie, we are in for a treat. We're going to keep Louie busy today because there is so much to see, including in this case. Yes. I've already been in and scoped some of this out. <laughs> this is... Uh, that's the uh, artificial blood that they use in the Dracula films. Oh boy, and here is and Dracula right here. Bill to go see himself. Yes, I befriended him the last three years of his life. Was with him just uh, two weeks before he was lying on his deathbed and was the 101st person to pass by his casket in the funeral. Oh boy, now what are these? Oh, those are quarries, ghoulish teeth from uh, one of his Dracula films. And, uh, now, I'm not familiar Robert with Robert Quarry. He yeah. played Dracula in some well, of the early... Well, he, uh, uh, he played a, a vampire, yes. And, and uh, here like, is... I have uh, 255 different editions of Frankenstein, but in this one I have the signature of the teenager Mary Shelley who wrote it. And uh, this leaf I brought back from Switzerland from her garden where she dreamed up Frankenstein. And, Finally, that is a leaf from atop her tomb in England. And we have a picture of you visiting yes. her tomb. Now, her name again is... Mary Shelley. And she wrote she Frankenstein. Wrote, I don't know whether Frankenstein ever wrote back. That hasn't been determined. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she wrote Frankenstein. Now, these are amazing 
pieces of memorabilia you have collected. Um, Bela Lugosi, when I met him, he had uh, 25 statuettes of himself as Dracula made in Hungary. And right he, here. Right there. And he gave me one, and an earthquake promptly destroyed it. So he gave me another, and at that point it was down to uh, just one left, and finally uh, his widow over in uh, uh, the Hawaiian Islands, uh, she had the last one. What is well, this? Well, that is from Czechoslovakia. There's a uh, creature that I call the Man of Clay. This is called a golem, and that's been made as a film three or four times. So you really are, I mean, you know, oh my gosh, look over here. Uh -oh. <laughs> this is, you, you've got it all here. Um, all the films here, all the Boris Karloff films, made for TV movies, correspondence, you've got it all mm. cataloged here. Yes. Well, I was very fortunate. I picked the right pair of maternal grandparents, wasted the first five and a half years of my life, but uh, in 1922 they took me to a film that had a little spook in it and uh, they realized that that was the kind of movie I wanted to see. So um, a man named Lon Chaney came along, began making movies for me, like The Phantom of the Opera and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And, the, and you got hooked and as a I kid. I got hooked. I, and evidently uh, you've been hooked ever since. I'm wondering about this over here. I was just looking over your shoulder. Now this doesn't necessarily look like it was from a horror film. Well, it was... Uh, they uh, made a movie out of my uh, character, Vampirella, and Talisa Soto wore that as the, uh, oh, as the woman from another world. Uh, now this looks Vampir like a, this is a comic book. Yeah, that's right. Still, Vampirella. Still being published today. Did you come up with this? Yes, I. This is your character. It's my character, yes. Wow. <laughs> so you write, you collect, you act. I, uh, obviously, I you edit, live here uh, in this house because here's your ironing board out here in the middle. Yes. We, we forget this is actually your house as well as a museum. Well, there's 18 rooms with 300,000 things in it of the nature that you're looking at, every room. Oh, now, wait a minute. What is this? This looks well, important. There, there's uh, the Lon Chaney Lost film, London After Midnight, which I saw in 1929 and hasn't been seen since. But that is the beaver hat that he wore and the ghoulish teeth. Look at those teeth. Now, how did you get... Oh, wait a minute. Here is the, here is the movie poster yeah. from that. Uh-huh. London After Midnight, back in... 1929. Wow. How many of these pieces of memorabilia do you have in here? Well, 300,000 things all together. There are 50,000 books. And, oh, I can read your mind. You're about to say Shirley. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> you, know, you haven't read all those books. I've read every last word in my collection. Really? When I get a new book, I uh, turn to the last page and uh, Read the last word. Now, where do you keep these books? I haven't oh, seen any books. Oh, well, down below you'll see 50,000 of them. <laughs> yeah, that was my lead-in. That was a little uh -huh. acting on my part because you do have, I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg <laughs> That's up here. right. We are and actually going to head downstairs to see well, the real you, collection. First, you may want to see the kitchen. In desperation, I'm turning it into an art gallery. <laughs> This is, we're going into the kitchen. Oh my gosh. There I was with my first abominable snowman. <laughs> Look at this, Louie. That's, that's, now that's what you started with, the abominable snowman. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and you've got every wall in the kitchen covered. Yeah, well, my wife came home and she opened the refrigerator and she found reels of film instead of food and she realized the the end had come. I had this wonderful wife for 41 years, but we got mugged in Italy, and uh, 11 years ago she lost her life as an aftermath of that. She was a Polish girl, and she translated 150 science fiction books uh, from French and German into English. So her love uh, was science fiction as well. Yeah, let, let me tell you, um, using a little story, when I met her, her accent was a combination of German, French, and British. 
and I'd never heard anything quite like it. I said, oh, where'd that interesting accent come from? Well, she was very proud of her uh, origin, and she haughtily replied, oh, my ancestors were highly civilized, while yours were hanging by their tails from trees. <laughs> Naturally, I never spoke to her again. <laughs> oh, no, you just married her. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're taking the house tour upstairs. Okay. But we've got to now descend. move quickly and descend. Oh, my gosh. Look at this, his whole little collection right here. Yeah, all Frankensteins and Draculas. Now, do you have a favorite, Frankenstein or Dracula, or do the two kind of... Uh, uh, well, I, uh, on uh, Christmas Day, 1931, I hadn't read the book Frankenstein, and uh, I went down to a theater to see the premiere of it. It might just as well have been called McDonald's or uh, any kind of a name because it was meaningless at the time. Of course, today it conjures up the, the vision of the, of the uh, Boris Karloff Frankenstein with a wonderful makeup by Jack Pierce. But in front of the theater, there was an ambulance, and I thought, uh-oh, what kind of a movie am I getting into? Inside, there were uh, uh, nurses standing. Gee, and about the middle of the film, a lady on the aisle screamed, jumped up, ran out of the theater. Well, in those days, you could stay to see a movie as many times as you wanted to. So I stayed to see it a second time and a third time. And every time at the <laughs> same time, a lady on the aisle screamed, jumped up, ran out the theater. So I was introduced to Hollywood hype that way. Oh, so you mean that was all done as a gimmick? Yes, as a gimmick. So the people standing outside would see somebody screaming, out, yeah. going into an ambulance? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, but now here's the wolf man. Yep. Lon Chaney Jr., the Wolfman. Wow. Poor Larry Talbot. That's who played? The Wolfman, Lon Chaney Jr., character created by my late friend Kurt Seodemach, just passed away at the age of 98. I had wow. known him for about 50 years. He gave us that famous saying, even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf. When the wolf bane blooms and the moon is full and bright. I'm scaring myself. The tour continues going down into the... Are you brave enough for the dungeon? Oh, you don't scare me. I don't think I'm scared yet. Yet? Well... Yeah, but who knows? <laughs> Where are we going now? Oh. <laughs> Louis, maybe you should go in first. Follow him in. I'm going to see what happens. Where are you taking us? There's a gremlin. Oh, look. Now, that's, that's from the movie. This is from The Tingler. Oh, that was a great one. <laughs> oh, that was a great one. The Tingler. Oh, that was one of the classics. And this is from the Gremlin. Yes. And more, yeah. you like these movie uh, posters. The posters. Yes. Uh -huh. King Kong, The Mummy, Frankenstein and the, the Wolfman, The Curse of, of the Cat People. Here are all your books down here. No, those are just pocket books. I'll take you through the hardcover books. <laughs> A little bit of an overflow in there. Oh, my gosh. Bela Lugosi wore this in the film, The uh, Invisible Ray. Oh my gosh, you... Here's another little... Oh, here are more alcove. books in here, as far as you can see back yeah. over here. I wonder, do you think any of the viewers would be interested in adopting this little child? Who is this? Oh, don't tell me I've changed that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh my gosh. Okay, now here are 125,000 stills from the last hundred years all around the world. All the Can fantastic I pull out the movies. King Kong? Frankenstein, King Kong. King Kong. Yeah. Wow. Close Encounters, Exorcist. Just Look at this. Everything of that. Fantastic. Now, these collections have been going on for. Since 1930, I got my first set of stills. Now, this has to be 
you know, a world famous collection here. As I said, not only this world, but several others. Oh boy. Now, no. oh wait a minute, this is interesting. Look at this. Yes. There's, there's, there's Jack Pierce with the making up Frankenstein. Jack Pierce was one of the early Hollywood makeup? He sure was. And he specialized probably in horror. That's right, yes. See, for those of us who don't really know a lot about this, this is a real education well, for people coming into a place like this. Uh, here at the corner of Santa Monica and Western in October 1926, little nine-year-old me was standing in front of a newsstand and this magazine jumped off the newsstand, grabbed hold of me, and you're too young to know, but in those days, magazines spoke. This one said, take me home, little boy, you will love me. Amazing stories. stories. And uh, the artist redrew it, moved me into the picture, made amazing forays, <laughs> moved it a hundred years into the future. Look at all these magazines and books and... Yeah, well, these, oh, all wow. these magazines that begin in 1923 with complete sets of weird tales and amazing stories and, and wonders. And look at this. Stories. Now, what is all... I feel like I'm in the wax museum <laughs> here. What are all of these? Are these historic well, or... Well, uh, these are from uh, Close Encounters. Look over here, Louis, from Close Encounters. And this this is, is obviously from the Wolfman. Enemy Mine. Yes. Wow. Look this at is Conrad Fidas, the man who laughs. And friends have often heard me say, if I can't take it with me, I'm not going to go. So a friend has arranged that I can take it with me. What do you mean? Well, it's miniaturized the whole thing so I can take it with me. Where? Well, uh, Three years ago, I, I was in China, amongst one billion, two hundred million people here, various places in the world I visited, and uh, in China, I think uh, amongst oh, the one billion, two hundred million people, perhaps eight or ten didn't get my autograph. I, uh, <laughs> I, I may have to go back. And, uh, <gasps> Wait a minute, what's that? That, 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 that? that wasn't there last night. Who is that? I don't know. So I can. Looks like a UFO alien to me. I think you've given this tour before. Oh, no, no. I no. think you're using some of your tried and true material on us. This really? Time. Well. It's working. Yeah, yeah, I came back from a 75 day vacation. There was the mail that was waiting for me. So now, are these letters and books that come to you from sci fi aficionados and fans that from all over the world? That is key wreck. Oh did, my uh, gosh! Did, did you see uh, the film Ed Wood? Yeah. There's a genuine flying saucer. From Ed Wood? Yeah. I was uh, his ill literary agent. <laughs> and what's all this? Now this well, this is from Son of Kong, and this is from King Kong. These were all uh, models that were used in the movie? That, that is correct. Uh, Marcel Delgado built them, and uh, Willis O'Brien animated them. Look at all these. Now, are these... And here's uh, the last... Oh, this is well, the Mar last Mar 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 machine from War of the Worlds, yes. Look at this, Louis. I, that was one of my favorites. Now, how was that used in the movie? Well, it uh, came over uh, in the city of Los Angeles and was shooting. But I mean, this was actually of, oh, shot oh, in yeah. the movie to look like. Absolutely, it was on wires, which were uh, made invisible eventually. How do you secure the? How do you get this stuff? Well, with three hundred thousand things, there's about three hundred thousand different answers <laughs> to that. Ray Harryhausen, today's great animator, he, thirteen years old, made that. Uh, model brontosaurus. Look over here, Louis. That's what he was pointing out. The big uh, brontosaur over here. Uh -huh. And these masks, and, uh, all of these well, masks. Th this is from um, a serial called, uh, let's see, it run right out of my mind. The Tin Man up here, Louis, he, right here. Uh, he, uh, that was uh, about a, a nation 30,000 feet under the earth. And this a big Gene head Autry up here. Serial. Oh, the, this is a phantom empire. And this is from uh, this island Earth. It's called a Metaluna mutant. Wow! Now I this never, looks like I never met a Luna mutant I didn't like. 
And these are life masks. Up at the top left is Boris Karloff. Oh, let me, let's and, walk over there if okay. we can. Louis, this is worth taking a look at. Oh my gosh, what is this? Can uh -oh. I pick it up? Yeah, at your own risk. What was this? Oh, it's from uh, some long forgotten horror fantasy film. Now, is this for science fiction fans? Yes. Something like this yes. would get them excited, wouldn't That's it? Absolutely, yes. I, I've been having an open house here ever since 1951. 50,000 people have visited me. There were two sisters came all the way from Transylvania, and uh, the most obscure fan visited me a couple of months ago from Tibet. Really? So they've heard about you in Tibet? In Tibet. Now, let's look Well, that was because of that uh, famous program, you know, Tibet, Your Life. <laughs> Louis, look over here. <laughs> These are the life I, masks. Life mask. This That's is Karloff. In the middle here is Don Post, who uh, had all of these made in this studio. Then Bela Lugosi. This is Lugosi right here. Right. Uh huh. Boy, this collection itself. Yeah. Vincent is Price, Price and John. Where's Vincent Price? Uh, second row, all the way over at the left. Oh, over Vincent here. Vincent Price, and then Tor Johnson, uh, the uh, fat monster from Plan Nine from Outer Space, and next to him is is uh, Glenn Strange. He played Frankenstein's monster at one point. And, and this uh, looks. This fellow looks familiar. Yes. Well, that's Christopher Lee. Wow. I'm a woman. I'm fixing to carry this out of here. You don't want me to do that, do you? Uh, there's the Pteranodon that was trying to fly away with Fay Ray. I, I so got this th goes all the way back to the original... 1933, King Kong. Oh, this has to be one of the most famous pieces in your whole collection. That's true. And this is Kong. How would this have been used? Well, I think that so was just ma made after the film uh, as an object for collectors like myself. So you really, oh my gosh, look at this. There's the, the uh, Earth saucer. versus the flying saucers. Yeah, it's hitting the Capitol building. Uh-huh. Kong breaking yeah. loose of his chains. You recognize this little puppet? Sure. Sure. Well, I don't know whether they really do or not. He, he comes from Japan from some automobile manufacturers. He's a, he's a toy Yoda. A toy Yoda. <laughs> okay, Hill, I've got something else to show you. Why am I not surprised? Well, there are 600 books about Atlantis, the sunken world. Now, do you believe in Atlantis? Was there an Atlantis? I think so. There was a, an Atlantis and a Lemuria and a Gondwana land. By the way, here, a lot of titles you'll probably recognize have been made as films or television shows. And these, you've read every single one of them? Every last word in my collection. When I get a new book, I turn to the last page and <clears throat> read the last word. More books. Now this was, this home originally belonged to the poor man's Tarzan, Raymar of the Jungle, John Hall. Oh, so here. even this house yeah. is connected That's with the right. movies. Well, we are ending this tour in the... Karloff Lugosi Memorial Room. Uh, <laughs> I saw Bela wearing that Dracula cape 1932 on the stage, and it wound up in his infamous film Plan 9 from Outer Space. Which was his... It was his uh, next to final film. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in my guest book there, he wrote one word, amazed. <laughs> I have a coffin table here. There's a room for one more. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a, a real coffin. It really is. <laughs> I, oh, gosh. Now, you really, um, does any of this, did any of this ever scare you once you realized that No, was... the only thing that scares me is the uh, IRS. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going to happen to all this stuff? Well, I wish I knew. You know, 25 years ago, I was seen on television shaking hands with Mayor Tom Bradley, and I offered, I said, I'll open the front door. You can come and empty out the whole house. You can have it free. 
But five years went by and he got Dear John letters from uh, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. They said, yes, we're acquainted with Mr. Ackerman. He's a fine man. We'll vote for him for mayor. <laughs> but uh, they weren't about to uh, create a museum. So I gave up. And uh, frankly, if I were a vegetarian, I could have survived on the giant carrots that have been dangled in front of my nose for the next quarter of a century. Over in Berlin, they were going to buy a $42 million hotel and empty it out and fill it up with my movie material. But when the Berlin Wall went down, the economy went down. So um, I don't know that... Uh, so if, it's just uh, staying here in your house. Well, eventually... Because this uh, is a world-class collection. Yeah. Well, when I go to that great sci-fi convention in the sky someday, I guess it'll all be left behind for posterity. Well, I was uh, fixing to say if anybody could take it with him, it'd probably be you. <laughs> but you'd have to have a box bigger than that one to take it all with you, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, yes. Well, let's, let's uh, say goodbye. Okay. This has been wonderful. I had no idea really what I was getting into. I have uh -huh. heard about you for years. You well, are a living legend. Well. <laughs> and uh, this has certainly been no disappointment. You take uh, private tours of people oh, through every, here? Oh, every Saturday that I'm here since 1951. I've had 50,000 fans have visited me. They've come from Transylvania and as far away as Tibet. You told us that one, but I tell you, when we put the address and the telephone number and all that on the They're quite well you better be so. ready because <laughs> our viewers are going to come over here okay. and and okay, really fine. give you the and they're not going to stay just 30 minutes oh <laughs> okay they'll be welcome all right we're saying goodbye and i think it's appropriate that we have this portrait yes of boris karloff who had to be i guess the greatest or one of the greatest of all well, time? with Lon Chaney Sr. in the silent days, and I think uh, Boris Karloff was starting off with Frankenstein. He really carved a, a career as a monster. When you took off the face of the monster, there was, there was Santa Claus. He was just as wonderful a human being as you could hope to, to meet, along with uh, Vincent Price and Peter Cushing. There was a film called The Unholy Three, and that trio was The Holy Three. Wow. What a wonderful life you have had, and isn't it wonderful that it have you've spent your whole life doing something that you have a passion for? Yes, well, the end is not yet. I hope to be the George Burns of science fiction, and uh, 16 years from now, celebrate my 100th birthday. And we'll be here with you to help you celebrate okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Forrest Ackerman, the undisputed king of science fiction. He invented the word, came mm -hmm. up with the word sci-fi back in 1954, and you have a collection here in Los Feliz that is unequaled anywhere in the world. Thank you so much for sharing your home and your collection, your pictures, your books, your mask, your models, with all of us today, it has been a real pleasure. My pleasure, too. And as I say, uh, room for one more. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.